Beth, we got a big one this weekend. Can Bama beat UConn? Can they or will they? Can they? Sure, they can beat UConn. I'd say probably a 20% chance. And the reason being, look, if they can impose their identity on the game, if they can gain an advantage, how do they gain an advantage? Playing ahead of the UConn defense. How do they gain an advantage? By making two people play them coming off ball screens and dribble handoffs. How do they gain an advantage? By downsizing and pulling Donovan Klingon away from the basket. There is a pathway for them to win this game. Now, I believe that UConn will have the answer to the questions, but do they have a chance yet? If they can impose their identity on the game, then Alabama has a chance to win this game. I don't think that you kind of allow that to happen, but surely they have a chance. Well, first of all, this is the best way to put a coach, especially for the purposes of first take. That's their only chance. Their only chance. They don't have any answers for UConn but one and one thing only. This is one of the leading teams shooting from three-point range. They led the nation in scoring with over 90 per game. Uh, they were one of only four teams in the NCAA that averaged, you know, that, that shot, you know, as, as many threes as they did, and they're shooting 37% from three-point range this season. That's the only chance you got. You can't match up with UConn size. You can't match up with their tenacity, their, co their togetherness, what they do cohesively as an offensive unit, what they do cohesively as a defensive unit. We're clinging in the middle. This is a guy, Illinois, was 0 for 19, 0 for 19 on shots he contested. This is not a guy that you want. You don't want to go near him, okay, if you're Alabama. You got the launch from outside, and you're going to have to make those shots. And not only that, you're going to have to push the ball up the court. Anything to stay away from UConn's bigs. Push the ball up the floor, beat them up the court, try to get into the open court and create opportunities for yourself that way. Not that that should work, but try that. And other than that, Three-point shooting. It's really your only hope, Coach. It's really your only hope for, for, for Alabama. Well, well, it is. 50% of the shots come from the three-point line. They made 16 the other day. They make 11 and a half a game. They've, Like you said, Stephen, they average 90 points a game. So, like, UConn's got to do what they did basically to Illinois. That's basically take them out of their game. I mean, they absolutely dominate them on the defensive end. The matchups will be the thing to watch. The matchup of Klingon. On Grant Nelson, that will be a thing to watch. And then I think Stephen Castle will defend Mark Sears. Mark Sears has averaged about 24 a game in the NCAA tournament. 51 Mark Sears shooting. is a dynamic guard, but Castle has the ability at 6'6 to shut him down. Sears is at 51% shooting from the field, 45% from three-point range. He would need to yeah. do at least that in this game in yep. order for Alabama to have a chance. Okay, Coach, let's talk legacy here. Where do you think a six title puts UConn among the all-time great men's basketball programs? They're the bluest of bloods. I call them a new blood. In the last 30 years, that would give UConn their sixth, their sixth national championship. Can I, can, uh, Duke has three. Carolina has three. Kentucky has three over the last 30 years. That would be, that would be UConn's sixth. To me, there's old bloods and new bloods. The New Bloods, Connecticut, is the most dominant program in the last 30 years. And if you put the women on top of it, there's a reason they call it the basketball capital of the world. It's absolutely ridiculous what they've been able to do in stores, Connecticut. So, yeah, you know, you could talk about Coach K and the Fist. You could talk about the pyramid of success for UCLA way, way back in the day. You could talk about the Carolina way. I started with Dean Smith, but in terms of – in today's modern day of college basketball, UConn wins this one. They already have five. The rest of them have three over the last 30 years. If UConn wins this one, they are the bluest of blue bloods. You don't get to say that, Coach. You don't get to say that. We don't get to say compartmentalize and parse it by saying today. When we're talking blue bloods, that's what blue bloods is all about. You're taking into account all of history. The Boston Celtics, the Los Angeles Lakers, we see them and we revere them as the two most storied franchise in basketball annals. Why? Because of what they did from decades past combined with what they've done this year. Boston only has one title. You know, I mean, since, since, since the 80s, for crying out loud, you won in, 2000, you, you won in 2010, 
okay? You lost in 2000. I'm sorry, you won in 2008, lost in 2010 to the Los Angeles Lakers. You've been knocking on the door with Tatum and Brown ever since, but you haven't closed the deal. LeBron and the Lakers won a title during COVID, all right? Prior to that, they hadn't won a title since Kobe with the, you know, back-to-back -back champions, and they went to three straight NBA finals. Prior to that, they, you know, they was on the verge of three P, you know, they three-peated. You got that going on. Here's what I'm telling you. You got to take into account history. And when I think history, I got UConn right up there top three. But I'm not eking out Duke and North Carolina because they've won. How can you not have UCLA in that conversation what, 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 if you're talking what, what, history? What, 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 again, I'm talking history, but I'm saying history paired with today. I'm not saying that you omit history. You don't omit today. You take it all into consideration. One of the things we lament about John Calipari is that even though you won a decade ago when Anthony Davis was the man in the middle for you, you've got one title in 32 years as a coach. In Kentucky, you've been there for 15 years. You only got one title. We're looking at it from that standpoint. When we look at Krzyzewski, we know what he meant to do. When we look at what Roy Williams did and how he restored North Carolina, okay, we see what he brings to the table. And you see that rivalry and the fact and the fact that they were an impediment to the other's success. They were directly standing in the way. See, if you're UConn, you could have gone you could have gone through things without facing that kind of nemesis along the way. Even Duke and North Carolina, what makes them so special is that you know they have to go through each other in order to get to the promised Even land. A. And doing that matters. And that's why I got but, them top but wait two. Wait a second. Along you talk about because going through someone. Do you remember the Big East? Do you remember what you had to go through in the Big yes, East? You remember, remember the gauntlet that you had to survive oh, in the I Big totally East? I totally agree. Back that's in the day, the Big East. That's not the day. But that hasn't changed with Duke and North Carolina.